Hope you are doing well, having a great week. Happy Friday, you made it to the weekend. Um, we'll kind of go through everything um, based on what you sent me for your videos and stuff for this week. And I'll give you a couple of new things to be working on um, until I see you again next week. And that'll pretty much be it, we'll go from there. So first thing is, let's do the, the B-flat inversions. Those are looking fabulous. You did a very nice job getting our speed up a little bit. We've got really confident approaches going from chord to chord. Fingering looks good, um, great pedal technique. Everything looks really, really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and move on from that for this, this week. Um, this week, we're gonna start something new for our technical exercise. So we're going to um, actually go back to another pentascale and triads, which at this point, hopefully is like, whew, easy breezy, right? So the last one that we have for the most recent paper that I've given you is um, all of the minor keys that we've been working on for our pentascales and triads, right? We've done G minor, C minor, and F minor. The last one now is going to be B minor. So we're going to take care of that for this week. You should have, I think, no problem at all going through the pentascale and blocked and broken triads on your own. Remember to check your key signature. We don't have all white keys in the key of B minor and especially in the first five notes, we're gonna have some stuff going on that we need to be aware of, um, but you'll be able to hear it. Like if you go to, to play a B minor pentascale with only white keys, definitely doesn't sound <laughs> either major or minor. Um, so we, we definitely need some help in there. We've got two sharps in the key signature. B minor is relative to D major, so they have the same key signature. Um, so we'll do our pentascale. We'll go ahead and just throw that hands together already. And then of course your blocked and broken triads using the notes in a B minor chord, which would be B, D, and F sharp on top, okay? So that'll be our technique for this week. We will go over that together when I see you next time. Uh, the theory, I think maybe either we didn't have time for it or you might have just forgotten to send me the picture. So just to recap that real quick, we'll, we'll take a look at it together next time. But our most recent page was page 47. Uh, we're still working on our transposing on this page, right? We've already done 46 over here on to 47. So this is giving us a longer example of something to transpose. We've got this longer song up here um, and that is in the key of C and then we are transposing it into the key of D. Look at that, same key signature as what we'll have for our B minor uh, pentascale and triads. So very consistent there. But remember the nice thing about having your key signature when you're transposing is you don't have to worry about keeping track of which sharps or flats you have in any given key. You just have to make sure that all of your interval distances are exactly the same as your original piece. So transposing from C to D, we'll take care of that this week if we um, didn't have time to do it for yesterday. And then if it's already done, we'll just take a look at that together next time I see you. Let's see, let's, let's work on Let It Go next. So this one, I think maybe ran out of time to, to send me an example of what's going on with the metronome. But last time we had talked about using the metronome because we're trying to start getting our speed up, right? We wanna make this start sounding more like the actual song, uh, especially those places where, where we're really kind of very comfortable at the slower tempo just to make sure everything is lining up correctly. So now we wanna start incrementally increasing our speed just a little bit at a time. And the metronome is a very helpful way to do that. It can be somewhat obnoxious, but it can also be very helpful. So we're giving that a try and it looks like you were having some trouble with that. So let's walk through a couple of different things that may be helpful to you with this. So our, our speed was set to 80, right? We were trying to, to get up to 80 here. So I've got that here on my Boon metronome. Now, some of this at this speed would be really pretty easy for you, right? If we do like the beginning. That's gonna be a totally, okay, that doesn't need to be on the whole time. Um, that's gonna totally be a piece of cake, right? Cause you're used to doing that so much faster. Anyway, we, we 
are, are very, very much good to go there. Um, and then even on the third line, when we start getting into our, our first verse melody here, we're pretty comfortable with this B2. So this is what this part would sound like. So I'm going into the third line. Two, three, four. So we're, we're pretty comfortable, I think, at that speed as well, if not even a little bit faster. 80 is kind of, I think, a, a very ideal tempo for us to be shooting for, um, just because it really does sound like the song. It doesn't sound like, oh my gosh, that was pretty, but I wish you had been able to do it faster. No, it, it, we don't get that impression at all. It just sounds like a nice interpretation of the song, right? So this would be a good finished tempo for us to be shooting for all the way through this piece. However, when we get into the more recent sections here in the verse that are a little bit trickier, this may feel a little bit fast, and I have a feeling this is probably where you started running into some trouble. For example, if I, if I was trying to do the fourth line at this speed, including the pickup from the previous line, let's see. So um, that, that I would guess is where we started having a little bit more difficulty doing this particular tempo. So a couple of things when you're working on it this way, or really on anything, using the metronome to increase your speed. Small sections are your best friend, okay? So don't try and do the entire page. Don't even necessarily try and do an entire line if we're working on an increased tempo here. There's a lot to unpack in each of these measures here in this particular song. Sometimes it's it's totally fine to have one line be your your measure of how how much of, of a, a portion of it you're going to be working on, right? Um, but in this case, I think one line is probably too much. And when we've been working really almost note by note on getting some of this faster, right? Um, we've we've never really done more than one measure at a time. So that's definitely where I would start with this. However, if you're going through it and you are still not even able to really feel good about going through an entire measure, that's when we probably need to slow our speed down, right? So if 80 is our goal tempo, that's fine. But if we can't get that right away, that's also fine. So maybe that feels too fast. Again, I'm kind of hanging out on the, on the fourth line here. What if I slow down to 70? Okay, so same thing. I'm going to start from my pickup going into the fourth line. And we'll try it with 70 now. And I'll just do a little bit. Okay, that one note always catches me off guard. <laughs> so... That definitely feels a little bit better, but, and I only did two measures there, and if that still is a little bit too fast, we slow it down more. We'll slow it down to 60. Give that a try. Same spot. Three, four. Okay. So that is another option. Um, when you're going over this kind of practice, it starts to feel draining pretty quick. So again, you wanna make sure you're not trying to do every single part of the song this way. You'll get pretty burned out, especially if you're towards the end in your practice and you won't want anything to do with it for a very long time, right? Which we don't particularly want. So what I want us to try and do for this week Let's set a smaller goal with this, okay? So let's say we're only going to do with the metronome. <laughs> okay, so the section that I was doing, I was coming in right here, right? And then stopping somewhere around right here. So let's say if we're gonna be using the metronome, let's start at 60, that last speed that I just did, okay? Cause that's gonna feel a lot more manageable. And we're only going to try one measure at a time. And we're really gonna focus on this fourth line here. Okay, so to start, you would start with your metronome at 60, coming in on your pickup here, and then maybe stop with this last note in the measure here, yeah, before your, your left hand starts the new downbeat here. Um, but you're just trying to get that section comfortable, right? And then when it feels okay at 60, try and do the next measure. 
And then when that measure feels okay at 60, see if you can do them both back to back, right? So this is all just your, your first step, right? And then the next thing you would probably wanna try and do is see what happens if you bump it up to 64, okay? When you're increasing metronome speed, you wanna try and stick with um, a minimum of two beats per minute. And usually you wanna try and increase by about four at a time. If that feels like not enough, then you can increase by six or eight. But if you try and increase by just one at a time, you will never make it. You'll be there forever. And um, anything more than four at first is going to probably feel like a, a big jump. So we'll start with just one measure at a time, really focusing on that fourth line. Keep your tempo starting at 60. When each measure is good at 60, then you can either try a new measure and put them together at the same speed, or you could even just stick with your original measure and then start bumping up your speed that way. Okay, both of those strategies are going to be helpful, but let's see how that goes if we try that out specifically this week and we kind of reduce our, our how, how much of this we're, we're applying it to. We'll just stick with that one line. The rest of it, we're, we're continuing to work on just our regular coordination with both hands, with the pedal, and then um, hopefully next week we can get started on the chorus because that would be, I think, pretty fun. So we will see how that is looking next time. And of course, we can also go through some of those strategies more together when you're here um, to see if, if maybe that would be helpful as well. So then first voyage, lots of good stuff in here. Our dynamics are still looking really solid. Very nice job there. Um, remember, we've been talking about applying that arm strength on the louder sections and even a, a, um, practicing them just one hand at a time so you can really focus just on that, right? Um, we'll, we'll kind of move away from that a little bit for right now. Our, our loud dynamic is, is looking quite a bit better than we had it before. So what I'd like to do is kind of change directions a little bit for this week. We're going to, I'm trying to read all my notes here. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So I have two, two things that we're gonna kind of be focusing on with this piece this week. First thing is I noticed you, you seem like you're actually doing quite a bit of it from memory. And even when you're here, right? The first few page turns, it doesn't really matter when I turn your pages because you're not totally paying that much attention to the music anyway. There might be one section here or there like whatever that section is, right, for your right hand. Um, you'd think I would know it. So anyway, um, there may be a, a little place here or there where you feel like you need to look up for that reassurance, but I really do think you, you pretty much have a lot of this memorized. So that's our first thing with this one for the next week or so. We're gonna see how much of it we can comfortably get memorized for the next lesson. And that means that you're gonna wanna start practicing just going through it without the music in front of you so that that way you're, you're kind of forcing your brain to rely only on what it can remember and um, you don't kind of have that safety net of having the music up there to glance at if you need it on certain spots, right? Because I, I bet you, you have more memorized than maybe you think you do. So we'll kind of give that a try this week. Um, my guess is that, okay, there we go. When we get to maybe, maybe somewhere on page four, but I think you probably have a, a considerable portion of page five and most likely all of page four memorized um, if you kind of make yourself think through it that way I, I bet you can probably do that if not that's fine but that's kind of one of the things that we'll target this week okay because definitely your first few pages super solid no no problem there now I'm guessing when we get definitely to the last few lines of page five we will still need the music there and this is the second thing that we're going to focus on for this week when we get to measure 117 right right about here right before our, our modulation when we get to this point I want it to intentionally slow the practice down so we can only focus on rhythm and timing we've done a lot of of concentrating on trying to get faster on including dynamics on um, thinking about our expression right all that talking we've done about making your right hand sing out and and bringing out the melody and all that sort of thing we've talked a lot about that kind of stuff in the last few months now 
we got to see if we can tighten up some of these coordination places. There's a few places where I think when we are trying to focus on getting our speed up, the hands together piece is, is not quite as solid as what you could do one hand at a time. And that's totally normal with how much is going on here between the two hands, especially once we get to the key change. So what we are gonna try this week is just to see if we can reinforce all of the, the correct rhythm and coordination there. There's a couple places where, like for example, your, your hands, one hand either wants to add in some extra notes or the, the hands kind of, one runs away from the other a little bit. So if we're looking at 117, So starting right there, we really want to keep our tempo pretty conservative here. Um, if we try about... keeping that same tempo all the way through those lines, right? I'm not getting to the last two measures of the page and going, right? Now we do want it there eventually, but for right now, we want to keep the whole thing on the slow side. But you can see where we're basically just trying to make sure everything is coming in exactly where we want it. And this may be helpful for you to kind of have this to reference as you're working on it this week. So I'm going to play through. Um, I'll start it in the same spot and I'm actually going to play through quite a bit here so you can have something to either hear or to go back and, and even like play along with a little bit. Um, but We'll see if, if that maybe is, is helpful to kind of have a, a reference point, something you can go back and, and check. But let's see if we, again, keep kind of that same tempo. This is about what we would be looking at. So we'll do one, two, three. pretty solid um, at a little bit of a faster tempo there that one is is usually pretty consistent so we'll kind of end that section around there but you can see we're we're really keeping everything very ordered and very steady there and again that may even be a little bit too fast right if we need to slow it down a little bit more that's totally fine too. So that's kind of what we want to bring to attention when we're working on this one this week. And then when you get to the end, very last page, right? Here I think we're still kind of get used to, still trying to get used to some of the new sharps that we have in that new pattern. Um, I would maybe on the very last page, I would do a little bit of practice just for that right hand so that we can maybe get a little bit more comfortable with what some of the movements are gonna need to be. And I think that should be, be pretty good for us. So let's see. Somebody who's using a chainsaw, that's fun. Um, all right, so I think that takes care of everything. We are still done with Hannon, right? So no new Hannon there. Um, and then when you come in next week, obviously we'll, we'll take a look at the theory and we have our new technique um, and our two pieces. So if you have any questions about 
any of those specific strategies, remember you can always just shoot me a text during the week and say, hey, I'm really having a hard time with X, Y, or Z. Um, what should I do? And I can always help you out there if you're kind of really running into problems, okay? So give all that a try this week. What I'd also maybe do is um, the, the first time you go to practice after watching this, I would kind of have this pulled up and ready, this video, so that that way you can double check like, oh, what am I supposed to be doing on this this week? Don't let yourself fall into the trap of, I'm just gonna you know, kind of run through everything and do it once or twice and, and then I'm good to go because we wanna make sure your practice is serving you the best possible, that we can be practicing smarter, not harder, right? Um, and that we're really intentionally focused on things that are going to improve some of those places that are giving us a little bit more trouble than others right now, right? But your pieces are looking fantastic. We're, we're still making really nice progress there. We're kind of in this interesting stage where we're more with first voyage, right? Because we still have some new stuff to go over and let it go. But with first voyage, we're really in this final stage of, of making all of those last little pieces come together and then just being able to enjoy playing it and, and focusing on the expression. So we are doing great there. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll definitely spend some time together on Let It Go, working out some of those tempo things, right? Um, when I see you next time. Okay. All right. Well, have a great rest of your week. I think that is everything and I will see you next time.